How's it going, everybody? Have you ever wondered how to get that uh, dealership shine back on your vehicle? Well, take a look at this video and hopefully I'll be able to fill you in. Now, as you guys know, I'm usually uh, doing my videos on this baby right here, my 2019 Corvette Stingray, but because this is something I've never done before, like everything else I do on my channel, uh, I decided to test it out on my 2017 Mercedes C. So what I've done already is gone ahead and washed and dried the car. Uh, I've got a whole box of products here and I'm gonna explain what each and every one of them do um, to the vehicle to try and get that shine back. But essentially what I'm trying to do is, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see in this video. Oh yeah, you can see pretty well is, see these swirl marks and, and uh, kind of imperfections in the paint here. The idea is to polish all of that out to get a nice mirror finish and it's obvious, obviously, a lot more noticeable on a black vehicle than than any other gone through and done a bunch of research on what products do what and you know what i think is the best way to to get this job done and i know this is going to seem like a plug for chemical guys but i promise you it's not i'm not sponsored by anybody or anything the reason i'm making this video and the reason i've made all my other videos is because i don't i've never done this stuff before and i'm making these videos for other people who have never done this sort of thing before so you can use my example for better or worse to gauge how uh, feasible this stuff is to do on your own. So what I have here is I've got the Mother's California Gold uh, Clay Bar Kit. All right, it came with this spray, microfiber towel, and two of these clay bars. And this is gonna be the next step after washing the vehicle. The purpose of the clay bar is to remove all of those impurities from the uh, paint so that when you get into the polishing portion of it, you don't scratch it up and end up with even more swirls and marks than you did before. In any case of the incredibly likely event that I completely ruined my paint, I've decided to just do one section of the trunk first before I just go crazy on the entire car. Uh, this product says, the, the clay bar says to pick a two foot square to, to do it first on. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do all of this, the clay, the polishing, the waxing, and everything like that on just one half of the trunk just to see how that pans out and if I can make this look even similar to what it looks like online when the professionals do it, then I'll go ahead and do the, the rest of the car. Probably do some type of cool time lapse or something like that so you guys don't have to sit through all of that. Just know that what I'm doing right here is what I'm gonna do on the entire vehicle and then I'll show you the after. Um, but to be clear, my, my uh, video editing skills aren't like the best so you kind of get what you Pretty much all it says to do is to take this clay and flatten it out and then spray the surface with this and then wipe it until it's smooth. So this clay is pretty sticky. It feels like the clay they used to play with as a kid. So we'll see. I'm just going to apply this pretty liberally. I don't have masking tape or anything like that. So I'm just going to bisect it by the badge here in the back and just do this whole section right here. So here we go. Spray in a good amount. And it does feel pretty rough, and that goes smooth pretty quickly. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be doing this like in circles or whatever, but you can you can feel it go from rough to smooth. It's pretty 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 distinct in the feeling. So yeah, that's already like I you know you hear about clay barring taking forever, and I'm sure it will, especially since you have to do these small little sections, but I mean that, if that was it, then this is, that went pretty quickly. I thought it was gonna be a lot more rubbing. That's smooth. Seems like that's pretty much done. Okay, so this is stuck to my hand now though. And then it says after you're done with each section to go ahead and knead it so that you trap all that all those contaminants within it. You can't see anything on there, but just knead it. So that way all that stuff's in there and it doesn't get on the next part of the car that you work on. So I'm gonna put this over here, take this microfiber towel that came with it and just wipe this area off. I mean, 
me, just step one with the clay bar, you can see that the paint is already, it looks a lot more, I don't know if pure is the right word, but yeah, it's a noticeable difference between the two. Here's the part that I'm most nervous about, the actual polishing portion of it. And now you'll understand why I decided to go with Chemical Guys as, as my uh, product of choice for this project. And that's because, um, you know, I searched all over the internet for you know, the best products to use, the best results, easiest to use and stuff like that. And they're pulling it all, all, from all over the place. Uh, and the big thing about it is that they're using different tools, different chemicals, different chemicals with different tools and stuff like that. So it's, it's really hard to figure out which matches with which. Like for example, like this polishing pad goes with a specific type of polish, but you know, how do you pull it from Joe Schmo's YouTube video without, you know, trying like having to figure it out for yourself, especially for somebody like me who's never done this before. Uh, and doesn't know what goes with what and really doesn't want to mess up their car. So Chemical Guys, um, they sell the products that they, and they do the demo videos. So again, you can you know, watch me go on about this, the amateur doing this, or you can go watch the pros uh, on their channels to do it. But uh, this is just showing you, again, like is this feasible for your average person to do uh, in their garage? So that's what we're about to find out. So I've got their Torque X here with the uh, medium heavy pad, and I'm gonna use this uh, scratch and swirl, this V, SS uh, to remove all of these swirl marks and I showed you kind of that before and I'll show you the comparison and everything like that so uh, what they recommend is you do five dots on the pad so shake it up here I don't, I don't want them watching this and telling me I screwed it up if, if this goes bad so we'll see and I don't know if this has any kind of uh, thing or probably should have taken that off before I started videoing sorry guys Okay. All right. So I'm gonna go five dots. Uh, and then I'm just gonna use this um, pad conditioner to lube up the surfaces pad so you don't get too much friction. That's another thing, the reason why I decided to go with this one, this is an um, orbital uh, buffer, which is unlike this one here, oh, Jesus. this one here that just spins in a circle is, you know, if you do it wrong, if you're not a professional like myself and if you do it wrong, it will burn your paint. This one supposedly will not burn your paint if you end up on rough edges or if you hold in the place for too long or something like that. I guess we're going to put that to the test. But anyway, so spray it with a pad conditioner. They say just spray it once. Okay, I was expecting more of a spray. Let's try that again. Like I missed. Sorry guys, you know you knew what you're getting yourself into when you came to my YouTube channel. Alright, let's try that again. Alright, there's your one missed. Again, probably gonna get hit for that one, but that's okay. Alright, so press it on the surface. Kind of prep the surface. There's one, two. And I don't know if I'm working in too big of a surface, too small of a surface. We're just gonna kind of see. I'm spreading it out so it doesn't get like flung over the place and all that good stuff. So and I'll do a couple of different passes and they say to start on the lowest setting, which is one. And then I'm going to go this way and then this way. So I'll do two, two tracks each way. Um, but this first one is just to spread it around on the first setting. So start it on here and we'll see how this goes. So that first pass was just to spread it out and now I'm going to go up to the maximum setting which is a 6 and then I'm actually going to go over it. All right. Uh, I'm not sure if you could see on here, let me see if I can show you guys, 
But essentially what I'm doing is I'm overlapping by 50%. They say to move it at about one inch per second. I feel like I was going a little bit faster than that. So I'm gonna try and slow it down a little bit when I'm, when I'm doing it uh, for real here. And I'm not adding any more or anything like that. So without further ado, here we go. I'm just going to wipe this polish off. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, that is a... That's a... That's a pretty noticeable difference. I mean, you're definitely looking at a mirror finish there. I still see a good amount of scratches and swirl marks not nearly as bad as on the side that I didn't do it let me show you guys so this is what I just finished you can see that it looks like like a sheet of water almost um, you can see all around the, the light here you can still see some of the swirls and scratches uh, and then now I'm into the side that I didn't do so you notice a pretty big difference there. I don't, I, you know, like the other videos, I don't have a, some tape or anything like that. So you just gotta kind of use your eyes, but let's see if I can get this to focus a little bit better. But there's the side that I, I did, looking very mirror-like. And then here's the side that I didn't do, and you can kind of see the imperfections in the paint and a, way worse swirl marks. But, you know, if I had to guess, you know, my first time doing this, my the pressure probably wasn't completely even. It probably should have gone a little bit longer um, but overall I mean that look at look at that I mean just look at in, if anything look at the, the reflection of the uh, garage door opener here how it's kind of like it's like almost like a mirror right there and then you come over here and it's distorted and that's a pretty big difference right there and I'm telling you looking at it here personally this is a big difference so all right all right, so I didn't video it, but I went ahead and did another pass because, you know, my first time using that, obviously, I was a little bit timid worrying about ruining my vehicle and whatnot. So this time I applied a little bit more pressure and I went a little bit slower. And I think the outcome is fantastic. So let me... so now you're really seeing that, that mirror finish. I mean, you can look at it in that light. There's virtually no swirl marks around it, no distortions, no nothing. And then you come over to this side where immediately you could see all those swirl marks, all the distortions and the, the picture you see up there versus coming over here. It's like looking in a mirror. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just do the rest of the car. So here we go. Okay, so I just finished with all of the polishing, polished the entire vehicle. Uh, this is not the final product yet because I still have to wax. I know I said I was gonna do that all at once, but I'm telling you, this is a freaking process. Like, I feel like I should have got paid to do my own damn car with how, how much work it took. But if you, if you look, it's definitely worth it. I mean, all those swirls are gone. Most of the scratches are gone mirror finish pretty much all around the car uh, i also did the windshield and you can see the windshield is looks damn near see-through hood 
looks infinitely better. All of those specks and all that nastiness is gone. I mean, you come up close, I don't even know how to even try to find the swirls. Let me see if this light will show. This is the top here. You can see virtually all the swirls are gone. Complete mirror finish all the way around, which is just fantastic. So next and final step. Well, okay, I'll say the next step is I have to hit it with the detail to uh, make sure that I get a, a good bond between the paint and the wax that I put on and then the wax. So not the final product yet, but the final product is coming. All right, we have finally reached the final stage of this entire process. This has been a three day ordeal. Um, so I'm excited to get this done with. So the final step is going to be to apply the wax or sealants, whatever you're choosing. If you decide to go with the ceramic coating or anything like that, uh, for the Mercedes, I'm going with a wax and for the Corvette, I'm going to do another video showing the ceramic coating. Um, and, and the difference about how I go about it. All right, I'm, and I'm not gonna get too deep in that because I'm pretty sure this video is gonna be pretty long already. All right, so I'm going with the um, Chemical Guys Butter Wet Wax, super easy wax to apply. Uh, I'm using the Meguiar's um, Ultimate Quick Detailer. I, I used to use their other quick detailer that came in that more maroon bottle. Um, this, I guess, is their upgraded formula. Works the same to me. Um, again, I'm not an expert, but I, I used to use when you know when I would wash my car normally and just like dry it off and try to get rid of the water spots I used to use Windex which I know there's probably a bunch of car guys right now screaming at me like oh my god yeah so don't use Windex on your on your vehicle on your actual paint because the chemicals in, in Windex or any type of glass cleaner are going to strip all of that wax and all of the things that are protecting your paint out of the paint so you want to use something like a quick detailer it doesn't have to be you know this brand it could be whatever, but if you're gonna use any anything like that in your paint to get rid of streaks, you're, you wanna use um, some type of quick detailer. Now, I'm gonna use this before I put the wax on, and that is just the one final thing to get any, any and all of the, the particulates and dust and everything like that off so that this wax adheres uh, in the best possible way. So I'm gonna show you that whole process again, um, and then I'll probably just kind of speed through the rest of it, and then I'll show you the, the final product on the car. Um, the, the great thing about this wax too is that you can use it on a much broader area so I'm, I'm hoping that the waxing is going to go a lot quicker because with the polishing and the buffing and all that stuff you had to kind of segment it and everything had to be broken into parts with this I'm just going to do the whole trunk and then you know the whole hood the whole you know we'll probably half the hood or whatever so um, without further ado let's uh, go ahead and start this process so what I'm going to do here is I've got my microfiber towel um, and it's already on mist. And this is a quick detailer, so I'm just gonna spray the whole trunk and then just wipe this off to make sure it's a nice clean surface for me to put that wax on, all right? Whole trunk. Just like this. And the wax can be applied um, by hand. I'm gonna use my buffer because I paid for it. Um, but you can do it Mr. Miyagi style, you know, one hand wax on, wax off, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna apply, I'm gonna put the, uh, the original one on by hand here, and you see, uh, I'm just doing straight lines here. Uh, I did the same thing again, man. No prep, that's how you know these videos are real, because these, these are not prepped. And I, sh I shook it up already, anything like that. Anyway. Um, so I got one of these little microfiber applicator pads, and I'm just going to do lines. Oh, that's more than what I wanted to do. Like that. Uh, my technique is probably going to get better as I go on. I say probably, but, you know, we'll see. And then I'm just going to do nice, long, even strokes on my car here, and just kind of apply it all over the surface that I'm going to be treating. In, in the Chemical Guys video, they said to just put it on until it goes clear. So, I don't know. We'll see how that works out. But here I've applied it to the entire car and the entire area that I'm working. So I'm going to put this down. Put this up. 
I'm gonna go ahead and use the, uh, the conditioner anyway, especially since it's a new pad, but this is the finishing and, and uh, waxing pad. So this is a nice soft pad. Um, I don't really know what, what speed I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'll go with three. So it's something moderate. And then we're just gonna see how this works out. Again, this is probably one of the more unscripted, so I'm not strictly following any one video or anything like that. So let's just see how it goes. and see how it looks. Oh, that's coming out really good. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, that looks brand new. And when you're watching the Chemical Guys video and even on the bottle, it doesn't give any recommended time for how long it should sit on the surface. I know, you know, your traditional turtle wax, where you get that little applicator, you want little swirls. It says to leave it on for X amount of time. They said that it can, you can let it set for a little bit if you want even better results, or you can remove it immediately if you're short on time. Again, I spent three days on this car, so I'm just trying to get it, you know, it done. Um, for those of you who aren't very familiar with, you know, the sealants and wax and ceramic coats and whatnot, um, that final step, that wax, is what actually is going to help protect your paint from UV rays, from dirt, dust, all that stuff, bird drops and stuff like that. Um, not in the sense that it's going to necessarily repel it. Like, you know, you see, like, it's not like ex-girlfriend proof where they, they're not going to scratch the car. It's just going to make it more scratch resistant. It's not going to let it sit on the surface easily. It's going to be removed easier. You know, you'll see it when you do uh, you pour water on it or something like that. It'll beat up and run off. And so it's just going to make your, your car easier to maintain and give it a little bit more protection. And I'm going to do a video on uh, ceramic coatings versus those actual, you know, clear coat coverings you can do. The I think it's the 3M uh, stuff. So I'll do another video on that, explain that a little bit better. But for now, I'm going to finish waxing this car and uh, show you guys the final. All right, here is the final product. I know I really didn't do a good job of doing before pictures, but take my uh, word for it when I say this is completely night and day. Now the sun has gone down, so you can't really see the full extent of what I did, but I mean, even in this light, you can tell that all over this thing is just like glimmering. Like, look at that. From the distance, I mean, that looks fantastic. And then you come up close here, and you can't even hardly tell. I mean, look at the, look at my reflection. I mean, that's crazy. So I will before I post this video, I will get one more shot in the daytime. Actually, I'll probably just post a picture or something. But yeah, here's the final product. And uh, stay tuned for just a little bit longer. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of after actions and some tips and tricks that I learned along the way. But there it is, final product. All right. So final thoughts on the project. Um, First, do not start this project unless you have time. I'm telling you right now that this is a weekend project unless you were just gonna like plug away uh, the entire day and do it. It took me three days to do it, working about four hours each day. Again, I'm not a professional. Maybe you've done it before. Maybe it'll take you less time. Maybe you've got better technique or whatever, but I'm telling you from my perspective, it took a long time. Um, was it worth it when you factor in cost? Absolutely. Especially if you, if you love your car, if you love your cars, like I love my cars and, and I actually enjoy putting in the work, then yeah, it was worth it because the alternative was spending, you know, in with the stuff that I bought to clean the car, including the, uh, the orbital buffer and all that stuff, probably around $300. Um, and that's what you're going to pay to have, you know, a professional detailer do exactly what I did. Uh, and then once I get into my next video with the ceramic coating, that goes up to uh, at least a thousand dollars of what I just did with paint corrections and all of that good stuff. And, but that's going to be a later video. So was it worth it? Absolutely. You've got the equipment to do it for the rest of your life. You're, this is something you're only going to do like maybe once a year. So one time doing this and you've already, 
you know, you've already made your money. Um, but it is, it is difficult at work. It did take a long time. It, uh, it, when I say difficult, I mean like labor intensive, not, not difficult, like not hard to do. Like it, it was, you know, pretty much, it was very easy to do. Um, literally anybody could do it. And with that orbital buffer, um, protecting you against your paint, you know, I did my entire car and used it both to buff and wax, uh, and not one burn spot, not one blemish, not, not one anything. So get that Torquex orbital buffer. I'm going to put the link in the comments to pretty much everything I use today. If you guys have any questions or, you know, comments on things that I did, didn't do ways to do it better, you know, hit me up in the comments. Uh, suggestions you guys want to see me try for the first time with, with the cars, uh, let me know within reason. Uh, and definitely don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, I'm going to be trying to put out videos around once a month. It just And this isn't anything I have scheduled. It's just random stuff that I think of, you know, that comes along with being a, a car owner. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm sorry it ran super long. And I'm, I'm even more sorry for my horrible editing skills. But uh, I'm glad you guys tuned in. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks.